Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, May 15th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Monday morning, one issue made big waves, e-fail, a vulnerability in how many email clients implement PGP and SMIME. Now, e-fail is really two distinct vulnerabilities. The first one is a problem in how many email clients do implement SMIME and PGP. And yes, this first problem does affect both encryption methods. That all starts out with MIME. With MIME, we can have multiple parts in our email. Some of them may be encrypted and your email client may be configured to automatically decrypt encrypted parts. Secondly, an attacker would have a copy of the encrypted email. Remember, that's why we encrypt them because the attacker can actually gain access to copies of our emails in transit. Now, what the attacker is doing next is to create a three-part MIME message. The first part is HTML and it's the start of an image tag. The second part is the encrypted email. The third part closes out the image tag. So the idea here is that the user opens the email, the content is automatically decrypted, but because the content is part of the image tag, it's then being sent to the attacker's web server from which the client attempts to download the image. So again, this first vulnerability, not a problem with either PGP and SMIME, really just a problem with sloppy parsing of MIME and HTML emails. And you should never really download images from remote servers. Many email clients do protect you from that and don't do that automatically. So that would be the first thing to check. Secondly, you probably shouldn't automatically decrypt emails. The second e-fail vulnerability is a little bit more tricky because it's actually part of the protocol or the specification of SMIME and PGP. The problem here is that the encrypted email starts with a standard MIME header and that allows us to perform a non plain text attack, which in this case is not actually used to decrypt the email, but again, it's used to inject additional content into the encrypted email, which is again an image tag or something else that downloads content from a remote site. So by injecting the image tag into the encrypted copy of the email, now as soon as the email is encrypted, the image tag is being parsed by your mail client. And as a result, the content is then being sent again to the remote web server as the client tries to retrieve that image. And of course, the image name is now the decrypted text of the email. According to the developer that released the details about this attack, this particular attack is very effective against SMIME. The second vulnerability doesn't always work with PGP. PGP first compresses the email before it encrypts it. So it's a little bit more difficult to predict the exact content of these first few bytes. Secondly, PGP does actually have an optional integrity protection that was actually introduced back in 2000, 2001 that should fix this problem, but because it's optional and some old mail clients don't support it, you usually only get a warning when the integrity check fails. So the real question here is how do you protect yourself? The Electronic Frontier Foundation actually suggests that you uninstall any plugins in your mail client that will automatically decrypt email. That may be a little bit uh, overboard here, but the problem is that someone could take an old encrypted email and then send it to you and have you decrypt it before you even realize what's happening. Now, I think what you definitely should do and probably already doing is that you don't allow your mail client to download external resources. And that includes fonts, style sheets, and images. So it's not just images that are a potential problem here. If you are really paranoid, you can still decrypt email messages offline. So on a terminal where HTML is not parsed, then this shouldn't really be a problem. 
The first vulnerability has to be addressed by email clients. So check if there's an update for your mail client. Now, not all email clients are vulnerable. The second one, like I said, is a little bit more tricky. They kind of have to change the protocol specification to put in a more robust control here to detect changes being made to the message. This also does not affect digitally signed messages. So digital signatures are still okay and you can still use them to verify that a particular individual sent you an email. And Adobe came out with two surprise bulletins today. One that fixes problems in Photoshop Creative Cloud. Probably the more important one fixes a long list of vulnerabilities in Adobe Acrobat and Reader. Now, some of these vulnerabilities allow remote code execution. The one that has already been talked about is the NTLM single sign-on hash theft issue. That that's another one of those issues, a little bit like with eFail, where your PDF document may download content from remote resources, in this particular case from an SMB share. And of course, if you are using NTLM single sign-on, then your authentication hashes are sent along with this connection request. So update PDF Reader and Acrobat if you're using these Adobe products. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.